Amen. Amen. You ready for day two of revival? Amen. Well, it could have been day two, day three, day four. It doesn't make a difference. Revival's every day. Amen. 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 Hallelujah this morning. This evening. <laughs> she got me. She got me. She got me again. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads and open up in prayer this morning. This evening. God, please get with me. My days and nights are coming together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us today, Lord, tonight. Lord, I ask that you just be with each and every one of us. Lord, I ask that revival start with each and every one of us. Like we heard last night, Lord, that, that revival starts within us. And all we can do is express it with our outward, outwardness, Lord. And Lord, I ask that tonight just be as invigorating as last night, if not more. And Lord, I ask for your presence this, this evening to just turn and just touch each and every one of us, Lord. And Lord, if there is one with a need this evening, I ask that, that you reach down and you touch them and let them know that that need is taken care of. That healing has begun. And Lord, I thank you for holding our hand and walking us through each and every step of our life, just being there, knowing and feeling that you were right there. And in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to tell a little story before we get started. You know, something happens to me pretty much on a regular basis at about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And that is that her dogs wake me up and want to go outside. So when you get woke up by the dogs at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and, you know, your, your eyes are half closed and whatnot, I let them out, and of course you're sitting here waiting, and, and I, I get this question just out of the blue, and it says, do you have everything you need to walk with the Lord? And I thought that was a profound question. And I was sitting there, and I was thinking about it, and I'm like, salvation is what I need. Yes, I do believe I have it. And God says, you have more than you know, and it's all free and available Amen. and i said thank you lord for that word the dogs came back in and i went back to bed and that's what i dreamt of but anyways lord will come to you and talk to you at any time of the day or night doesn't make a difference if you're just getting up or whatever the case might be but just remember just to reach out to him and talk to him once in a while every day hopefully now let's stand and sing this morning Woo!
important part tonight is to know where we're going. Uh, I believe that the Lord can uh, bless us just knowing that we're going that way. Amen. And I praise Him tonight. Well, thank you. I, I woke up this morning, oh, victory in Jesus. Amen. I say you forever. There are some things.
sing that all night. Amen. Amen. My God is real. Thank the Lord that He's real. Uh, he's real even to somebody like me. Even to somebody like me. You know, I think of all the great biblical characters we read about and what great things they did uh, in the name of the Lord and all the great preachers that's preached and all the faithful servants I've heard who seem like when they prayed they could ring the prayer bells of heaven. And, uh, all those that's gone before me that cut the path for me. Amen. But my God's still real to me. Yeah. To me. And me. He loves yeah. me. Yes, thank you, Lord. As undeserving you. and unworthy as I am, He still loves me. Jeff Smith, you know there's a lot of us. There's a lot of us. But my God knows my name. And he wrote it down in his book. One, two. Amen. The Bible says to rejoice not because the angels are subject unto you, but rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I've said to you before, my name's written down in a lot of places. You know, they say today is one of the worst times you could live in for people trying to steal your identity. People trying to take what you have through uh, illegal ways. Got all kinds of numbers for you and all kinds of uh, record for you. But one of these days when all of that is over, and the Bible says, Skip, that the book will be open. And then there will be my name. My name. And my Lord will stand and say, Welcome in, my good and faithful servant. Amen. He's one of mine. He's going to say it to me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run right in there. I'm just going to take off. Run right in there. I'll be singing old victory in Jesus or my God is real or uh, something. I'll have, I'll have eternity to sing whatever it is. All right, Sister Leah is going to sing for us tonight. Uh, so I ask her to come and do that. I'm moral support. <laughs> we lean on each other. Let's, let's just say that. We're a team. So I practiced some songs, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't feel like the Spirit's leading me to sing those. So we're going to follow what he has for us and uh, obviously my plan wasn't his plan so just be with us What Brother Jeff was just talking about there made me think of this song. I'm sure you've probably all heard it at one point or another, but uh, you know, he's talking about the record book and our name is written there. Uh, first fret. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Um, and uh, so this. 
popped into my mind and on my heart, so just be with us as we sing it. to me. Um, I'm a big Dottie Rambo fan. And um, I heard this song when I was a kid. One of, one of the um, piano players at our church used to sing it as a special. And it's always something that stuck with me. Tears will never stain the streets of that city. You know, we have a lot of sorrow and grief in this life. And one big promise that we have is we won't have to deal with that anymore. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, one thing in here that really always speaks to me, in the chorus it says, no wreaths of death on my mansion door. That was a, a custom back in those days that you'd put a wreath on the door of a household where someone had passed away, a lost loved one. And when we lost my first son, uh, he lived for five hours. We were blessed to have that time with him. And when he passed away, they put a little, um, it was a grain of wheat stock on the door to symbolize that. So that holds a special place in my heart that we won't have to deal with that anymore. And we'll be with all those lost loved ones that we've lost that, um, you know, have made heaven their home. So just listen to these words as we sing them. If I could count all the tears that have fallen
So, um, is it good? This last one? Okay. Um, we always have something to be thankful for, even in the midst of our grief. The Lord always finds a little window to open and give us some joy. And uh, there's always something to be thankful for. Even if it's the smallest thing in the world, when you wake up in the morning, you take that breath, and you have another day to witness to your lost loved ones. That's something to be thankful for. And I've got so in my heart and uh, and I do have a heart Karen <laughs> but they confirmed it they showed me the picture <laughs> but uh, do I do that yeah, that's what it says and um, <clears throat> anyways they, they, they stuck a tube down my throat and it's messed up my vocal cords so 
I haven't been singing at all. You probably noticed, but we're going, she wants me to do a song, so I'm going to try this one. Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings, it Sounded good to me. Yeah. I, I gotta give you credit, that's the best that Skip has ever done. That is the best I've ever heard him sing. We used to sing together all the time. You did good. We used to sing together, and, and I told him his part was always easy because all he had to do was go, uh, uh, uh. He did wonderful. And I kept sit, uh, thinking when he was singing, uh, someday I'll sing with the angels above. You could do it right now. Yeah. It's a blessing to think that I'm a child. Come on, Jerry. Come on. Pray for him as he comes. man's worth keeping around. <laughs> oh, it's... Now, if you don't mean it, don't say it, but God is good all the time. All the time. <laughs>
Oh, if you don't care, let's just stand for just a little bit and let's just give the Lord praise. Lord, we come to you tonight and, and you're just so good, Lord. And, and, and all of our, our ways, and Lord, we know that sometimes those ways get hard and, and there are questions in life. And, but still, Lord, you are so good that you make a way when there seems to be no way. You are the one that, you are our provider, you are our healer, you are our physician. You are our bread of life. You are our living water, O oh Lord. You are our, our ever present help in time of need. You are our rock, that very same rock that went all the way back to Moses that provided water. That Lord, you are you are that rock and we thank you, O oh Lord, of how that probably all of us in this house tonight, one time or another, Lord, how in the world are we going to do that? They just think totally out of our control and Lord, you showed up and we praise you this night, O oh Lord, because you are worthy you are worthy to be praised and Lord we thank you that you saved us. We thank you Lord that you live within us by thy spirit. We thank you Lord that you are our teacher. You have asked us Lord that if we lack knowledge ask for knowledge. If we lack wisdom ask for wisdom. If we lack understanding with everything within us get understanding so this night oh Lord may uh, your preacher we ask, Lord, may, may your preacher hear from heaven. And, Lord, that we might all say when we leave your house, we know, we know that your presence, Lord, has been with us through your word. We thank you, Lord, for the service this for. We thank you, Lord. We, we felt your presence. We have been ministered to this night, Lord, and we thank you. But as we go into your word now, Lord, we pray that you will help us to discern Discover the great and the marvelous and the wonderful things that you have just for us. And we love you, Lord. We love you. And we know that if you didn't love us first, we would be without hope. If you didn't love us, you would have never went to that cross. If you didn't love us, you would have never been resurrected from that old tomb. But praise God. Praise God you come up out of that old ground that we might have eternal life. And not only that we might have eternal life, but down here that we might have life and we might have it more abundant. So, oh Lord, through this service tonight and continuing on, Lord, we just trust in you that all of our hearts, Lord, are ready to receive it and we will always live within that abundant life that you have for us. It's a good life and we thank you. In Jesus' name and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. I kind of... Uh, Got off to a rough start this day. And for those that were here last night, uh, you, you, maybe you remember, maybe you don't, but you remember my pretty glasses that I had last night. And there this morning, so I had them in my, my pocket. And um, as I'm known to do, uh, but I never had done it in this way, but the lens on the left side, it, it was cracked. Just right down the middle of it. I, oh no, what in the world am I going to do? Well, I happen to have my manly glasses with me also. And it was, I mean, it, just, just the way it worked out. It was not no time till my youngest daughter, for which we have her um, clean the parsonage for us. And anyway, she called me. You remember I was telling you last night about I have pink glasses too. Now, these are glasses that are given to me. And so anyway, I have no problem with them whatsoever. But, but my pink glasses and another that had the diamond stud type things in them. There in my bed, there at the parsonage, they were laying in a chair right there. And my daughter took it upon herself to text me and to say, I just want you to know there is no appropriate time for you to be wearing them glasses and you leave them right there. And it hurt me deeply. So anyway, I've got my manly glasses tonight anyway, but it's good to be a child of God. Amen. Oh, I 
I know, no, come on now. It's good to be a child of God. Amen. Amen. And I know, I think maybe we've been this through this before, but let's not forget. There's a lot of good benefits about being a child of God. Amen. Amen. You know, the eternity thing, that's a really big thing there. Also knowing that he lives within us right here too. Amen. Amen. But you know, there is, uh, well, as we just singing and then, oh, it just, it just, it just felt so good. And, and I was remembering months back, we're there at Dorsville. We were in the book of Revelation. And, oh, there in that fourth chapter, and I know there's a lot of stuff we don't understand about Revelation, but there's a lot of stuff we do understand about Revelation, too. And, oh, there's the churches gathered around the throne, and, and they just sing praises unto the Lamb that was slain, and holy, 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 worthy is the Lamb that was slain. As they're lifting up their voices unto Jesus. And, you know, I was thinking about that as Skip and, and uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> daughter, come on. And so, anyway, I was thinking of Leah. I know what it is, Leah. I know what it is. And I was just thinking about that. And, you know, the picture in my mind is one of these days, church, we're going to be there. Amen? Amen. Oh, we're going to be there. And uh, I also... This thought went through my mind very quickly that, that years ago I heard a, a preacher say that, uh, you know, when he made it to heaven, that it, it might be a million years before he, he gets to really see Jesus. And I disagreed with him then. I mean, you know, I just, that's his own thought. And that was his thought. But I, I'm thinking, I, I don't believe that at all. I believe that when I enter into heaven, no Peter's going to be meet me at the gate. None of the disciples, none of the apostles is going to be meeting me at the gate, but I'm just going to go fly right on through into the very throne of God. And one way or another, Jesus is going to greet me and he's going to meet me and he's going to tell me, oh, my son, I'm so glad you're home. I'm glad that you finally made it. And I know somewhere that I read where, where Paul says that, you know, all of these troubles and the trials and the tribulations that we had down here, does anybody ever go through that? Do you know what I mean? Can you say amen? amen? And so therefore, but I know Paul tells me somewhere, he says, you know what? One of these days, you're going to find out it's going to be worth every bit of it that you have to deal with down here. And people have to deal with a lot of not very good things. But we also know that eternity down here, just like the blink of an eye, it means nothing to eternity. But also as we're reading there in Revelation, and I think we've probably been through that before up here, but we go through it every once in a while at Dorsville, and it's a really good song. Uh, 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 um, you know, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know that we are sinner saved by grace. Amen. Amen. We know that we are sinner saved by grace, but even better news than that is, better news than that is that not only we are a child of God, but also we read about there in Revelation that, that you know, one of these days, all these sorrows, the pain, uh, there's going to be no more parting in life. Tears are going to be wiped from the eyes. Never, no, that, 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 that's in the past. Never to be, be remembered. But also as we read there in Revelation where it says, we are more than sinners saved by grace. Amen. Come on now, we are more than sinners saved by grace. Amen. I said we are more than sinners saved by grace. Amen. Not only are we the children of God, but we are kings right. and we are priests. Right. And if you're, oh, let's just start all over. <laughs> if you're glad to be a child of God, can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? If you're glad to be a child of God, can you say glory to God? Glory to God. <laughs> it's good to be a child of God. Amen. But you know, the really good thing about it is to, um, that there is, well, I'm it's what we even should do. You know, from 
time to time when, when things come up. And you go to Brother Jeff and you say, Brother Jeff, I just need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for that. That's biblical there. And in fact, you know, one of the things that we are as the church, we are a hospital. Those that with needs within their lives, physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever that it might be, we are a hospital. And so therefore, with boldness, with boldness, Brother Jeff, when you come to him with boldness, he, go, he takes you before the very throne of God. Because he is a king and he is a priest who has granted access into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God where I think it was last Last night, I think it was, where we talked about of how that, that, that Jesus as that lamb that was slain one time in the book of Hebrews, it says he entered into the Holy of Holies and he sprinkled his blood there upon that old altar, never to have to do it again. It was not a blood of bulls and goats, whereas man had to do it continually, but Jesus just done it one time. Amen. And he doesn't just cover our sins but he blots out our sins as in just like he wasn't even there isn't that amazing <laughs> so there again let's not forget Jesus is a whole lot more concerned about our future than he is our past now I know sometimes we can't get away from our past I understand that but when it comes into our relationship with Jesus Christ he doesn't remember our past either. Amen. And so therefore, as a child of God, as a child of God, as kings and priests, every one of us in here, every one of us in here is guaranteed access to the throne of God. Amen. I believe I've read somewhere in 1 John 1 and 9 that, that you know, if, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and, and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And though I take that personally, you do too. It's a promise. You know, songs that we've heard here tonight, they are a promise Amen. that we find within the word of God. I've made some pretty poor decisions in my life. And as also I tell them there at Dorsfield, I'm not, I every once in a while hear somebody say, if I had it all to do again, there's nothing I would change. Well, God bless them. But I'm not one of them. If I had it to do over, there's a lot of things that I would change. But I know when we were talking about revival, where does revival begin? It begins right in here with all of us. And I know this from experience. That, you know, when we were talking about a, a church being revived. And as the body of Christ, as we anticipate, you know, anticipate coming and meeting together, worshiping God, loving God, just waiting for the word to be presented because I, I can guarantee you. And if it was Brother Jeff up here tonight or Brother Coy, I, I tell you, this is the way I would look at it. Brother Jeff, Brother Coy. Brother Joe, not going to leave you out back there either. When they're preaching, they're preaching to me. What they are speaking, it is for me. But then also, that's the way for all of us. It is the inspired word of God, God's word, truth inspired by God. It is God breathe and in God's word when when we find ourselves revived and we find ourselves hungry for the word of God while we begin to praise him freely we begin to pray without ceasing amen. we begin to expect amen and we begin to promote amen. because of who that Jesus is amen to us within the church 
Uh, well, as we mentioned there last night, gifts that God gives to the church and of how there is a gift for each and every one in here. Amen. That's right. And Alpine Valley, Pontiac, Dorsville, all of us, we serve God as a body. Because there are things you can do that Brother Je Jeff can't. Right. And there's things Brother Jeff can do that maybe you can't. But, but as a body, everybody's important. Amen. You know, I think I've read somewhere Paul talks about that too. You know, the eye, the ear, the hand, the foot. Well, you know, the church that Jesus died for instituted that everyone has a ministry. Amen. Let's not forget, sometimes your ministry just may be just looking around in this church when you walk in and never knowing what somebody's dealing with but just to speak a good word to them. Might, they just might be, need to be reminded that Jesus loves them. Amen. Now I may be wrong on this. Sometimes maybe Brother Jeff needs to be reminded that Jesus loves him. <laughs> Sometimes maybe Brother Coy needs to be reminded Jesus loves him. Sometimes maybe Brother Joe needs to be reminded that Jesus loves him. Sometimes all of us probably needs to be reminded that Jesus loves us. <laughs> and Jesus does. And even though that he knew that when he come to die upon that cross, that there was going to be so many people that was going to reject him and still yet he died and still yet he resurrected up from that grave that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but shall have eternal life thank you lord thank you lord eternal life but then also within that Again, the good news, anybody within the body of Christ, and I know we, we deal with things. Oh, Satan comes against us. Again, Satan comes still kill and destroy. And one of the ways he does that, he brings doubts. He brings fears within our lives. And one reason why we also, and I know again, we all deal with it from time to time. But I think we're all in agreement here tonight. Sometimes we just got to say, Devil, you're a liar. Yeah, right. I said, nobody heard me at all. I said, devil, you're a liar. Yeah. And he is. Yeah. I believe I've read somewhere where he is the father of all lies. And the way that he steals and kills and destroys with you is through the mind. Bringing doubts. Bringing fears. Tonight as we look in the First chapter of Philippians. This is Paul's writing. Well, I know it was to the Philippian church, but now we're, we're taking this personally. So this is Paul's writing to, well, all but... Alpine Valley, Pontiac, and, and, and Dorsville. So we're taking it partially tonight. And, and I think, my, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the third verse, after Paul's greeting, then Paul says to, to you and me, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy. Now, now let's not forget joy, uh, Paul praying for the church, but let's also not forget that um, 17th chapter of John, 
where that Jesus is telling us there already, already now he was praying for his disciples and he prayed, Father, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to keep them in the world. And so therefore, even though that we're not of the world, we are in the world. And so therefore, uh, every once in a while, I, I think, well, wouldn't it be really great that if just as soon as we're saved, we just went on to heaven right then. And then we wouldn't have to put up with all this stuff that we're having to put up with. But it don't work that way because um, when it, whatever that it might be from spreading the good news of the gospel to the hospital that the church is, the physical and the spiritual and the needs within the body of Christ as well as those that are not yet a part of the body of Christ, but praying that they become the body of Christ. He needs you and he needs me for that to continue on until he comes back. But a lot of good stuff there in that 17th chapter, but one of the things that I love so much is right then, Jesus is saying he's praying for us. Amen. Let's get in our mind now, right now, as a child of God who are also blessed to be kings and priests, that we have a high priest right now sitting right at the, at the right hand side of the Father. Right. And he's interceding. We know that he intercedes for the sinner. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But he intercedes for you and me too. The spirit that knows the heart. God. God within us through the Holy Ghost. Of how that when we call upon the name of Jesus, you know, we're told to pray in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And he's praying for us. You know, as, as a church family, you know, that, that's one of the great things about a church family. The church family prays for one another. Amen. Of course, you should pray for your preacher. Right. But your preacher prays for you as you pray for one another. And then Jesus is praying. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. He, is, he is praying for you. And he's praying for me. Because he realizes. Let's continue reading. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you. The Holy Spirit has begun a good work in you. If you're a child of God, can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. He has begun a good work in you, and he's going to continue to do that good work in you till the very end, till your eyes close down here and you go into the presence of the Lord. He's going to continue to doing a good work. Now, very quickly, sixth chapter of Ephesians. Sixth, sixth chapter of Ephesians. Now, church, sixth chapter of Ephesians, 10th verse. Sixth chapter of Ephesians, the tenth verse. Now, church, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, which he empowers you. And he empowers me through his word, through his spirit, by his blood. He empowers you. Put that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual warfare. 
That's what we're really in today. It's not the physical. It's not with Russia. It's not with China. It's not with any man, but it is with the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness in high places. And sadly now, this is just an opinion here, just an opinion, but it seems as if our nation has become, has come to this point that our nation is more open unto the principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness in high places than we are unto the, 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 leading, the leading and the direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's just the way that it seems to be. I, a number of years ago, um, I had read, and I guess it happened, that our, our military was going to start having Wicca services, witches services. I guess they did. Our Southern Illinois there comes out of Carbondale that I used to to get, well I don't want to say religiously, but habitually because it had a, a word search in it. And I love to do the word search, but, but in the, the, the religious portion of that paper they started putting in there about witches and their services that they were having and, and how wonderful that they were. And oh, I don't understand this. And so... They it faith and values. Faith and values. And as hard as it was, you know, sometimes um, we stand. Sometimes we have to run. And so I sent them an email, what I thought about it, how pathetic that it was. Never heard nothing from them. And I give it up. That was harder than giving up apple pie, let me tell you. I mean, I love to do the word, sir. But I could tell the face section meant nothing at all. The Southern Illinois meant nothing at all. Well, we just want to be equal. Well, you're not going to get my 75 cents to do it. And I've never bought a paper cent. Well, now, wait a minute. I looked at one, and that come out on, was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday. And the last paper that I looked at, they didn't have the faith and value section in it. That's just exactly what they should have done. If they don't have, if they don't have any more than that just do away with it and they did but it seems as if our nation is more open to stuff like that That's right. than the teaching of the word I remember years ago I was taking some classes and and one of the instructors was uh, one of the the things that they they done um, was they go down to the Mardi Gras and I don't know that much about the Mardi Gras but you know it, it, it even there to the COVID, I mean, even some of the churches were starting having Mardi Gras. And why are we having Mardi Gras in churches? I mean, I don't understand that. And, and anyway, he was saying they would go down. And what they found at New Orleans was just like in, in other places. They said go down into Mexico, for which there was a lot of voodoo down there. And he said, one of the things that they saw that when people were really saved, now, I'm going to throw this in there. When someone is really saved, when they have turned their life over unto Jesus Christ, I'm not saying they're perfect yet. Well, in the sense they are, but there's a change that comes within their life. There's got to be a change if there's no change. You know, I've heard it said, I've heard it said, heard it with my own ears. Oh, that if you'll come, if you'll just only come to Jesus and you'll give your life to him, all of your troubles are over with. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> that just didn't it started. You know, we're told we need to consider the cost because there is a cost to asking Jesus into our heart. But the, the good thing about it is when I, I get away from self and I get away from my selfishness and I get myself into the Lord, my life is changed. Amen. 
my life is still yet got some problems and issues and all that stuff but I don't want to be without Jesus either. But anyway, this gentleman was saying they found it the very same whether he was in Mexico or whether he was in New Orleans. He says actually it was harder in New Orleans because he said they seen it time after time after time. People would, would come out of their churches. Christian churches. And then they would cross the street and they'd have all these voodoo things set up. And he said, people coming out of the churches and they were partaking of that stuff, which is anti-God. There's no way you can condone that stuff. And he said, it, it, it was really sad. But he said, one of the things that they saw in, in Mexico was that when those who were practicing this stuff that they would go into their houses and just like in the book of Acts, he said, they've seen it time after time after time. And they would bring all that stuff out and they would throw it down into the street and then they would set it on fire. Yes. He said that showed us they had a dose of the Holy Ghost. They had a dose of Jesus within their hearts because there was a change. What they knew, they had to give up. They gave it up. They didn't just keep it around. Say, well, I'll just wean my, you. we can't do that. We can't do that. Issues, issues, we better, we better give them up and we better give them to Jesus. Church, church has issues too, amen? amen. And we, we better, that's what we better do. We better take it, we better put it in the middle of the street and we better burn it up. We are in warfare, church. Yes. Not with flesh and blood, but of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. Amen. We're seeing more demonic activity than I ever remember in my whole life. And yet people is accepting it. Right. But then there's just something about starting to preach about Jesus. <laughs> but he's given us everything that we need. Amen. Now, I know all of us is in agreement. I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm just encouraging us. All of us. In the times that we live, there's no place to quit. Right. Um, kind of reminds me, in a way, of the, the president in Ukraine. That the United States sent him a message. That if you want to leave, we'll send you transportation out of the city. And I, I, this is not word for word, but this is what it meant. And his response was, I'm not going anywhere. What I need is ammunition. What I need are things to, to fight the enemy with. Church, as, as, as difficult sometimes as it may seem, up to today, we're not going anywhere. We're right here. Amen. Now, praise God, Jesus is coming back for his church. Amen. Yeah. One of these days, the Father's going to say, Son, go get my children and bring them home. But that's not today. And so, therefore, now very quickly, very quickly. Sixth chapter of Ephesians, 14 through the 18th verse. Get your loins girded up with the word of truth. Have on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Get that shield of faith because the old, the old enemy is going to throw fiery darts at you. Put on, wear your helmet of salvation. Take the sword of the spirit, which is, which is, God's word, truth inspired by God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching therefore 
with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. He's given us what we need. That's right. I said he's given us what we need. Amen. You're not serious. He's given us what we need. Amen. <laughs> We've heard all kinds of promises tonight. They are true. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, quitting on this verse. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, this is talking to us, church. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Somewhere along the way, I think you'll agree with me. I think you will. Somewhere along the way, we've kind of got away from the holiness of God. God said in the Old Testament, Peter said it in the New Testament, be ye holy because I am holy holy and I'm not I, I never was very smart at all and I forgot more than I ever knew to begin with but one of the things that I, I do know you can't play in fire without getting smoke on you you can't play in the mud hole without getting mud on you the world every day of our life calls us and, and we're all aware we see we see what people has allowed Satan to do in their lives and sadly it can happen in the church too you know every once in a while I hear about preachers read about preachers it just breaks my heart because I know somewhere along the way they've taken their eyes of Christ and, and, and I realize that if I take my eyes off Christ those things those I can find well I can find myself in places I I never thought I'd be we see families that are basically being we don't even know what a family is anymore we're seeing families being destroyed by all different types of things God bless them. God bless them. We, we, we don't condemn. We just take them up to, for Jesus. And you know, when we see people that are hurting and because they've allowed things to come into their life and God bless them. But I know, I know victory in Jesus. Amen. Nobody heard a word I said. There is victory in Jesus. <laughs> and I also know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus is a whole lot more concerned about our future Amen. than he is our past. Amen. And I think that's really, really good news. Amen. Amen. Brother Jeff.